This video is going to discuss very briefly HTML5, which I know you've already started working on. Uh, HTML5 is the most recent version of uh, HTML. Uh, prior to this, there were multiple versions working simultaneously, and you had to choose what you wanted, and it was all very complicated. Uh, HTML5 simplifies quite a bit. Um, and for class on Monday, you were asked to use three different HTML5 tags, section, header, and figure, and introduce them into your uh, portfolio.html file, which I also asked you to code. And as you'll see on my screen right here, I have my portfolio.html file open. Looks like it needs to be saved uh, again. So, um, with the requirements that the exact requirements that I asked you to have uh, for for class, uh, namely some header tags, uh, H1s, H2s, H3s, your image, a list, and a paragraph describing your portfolio items. I use one paragraph here because they are within the same portfolio uh, series and portfolio items that I chose. Now, one of the wonderful things about HTML5 is that it creates a semantic understanding, or semantic tags, rather, uh, to help structure and organize your code. Okay. This replaces the need to create your own tags or divisions, which we will talk about in a few weeks. So, what used to happen is that people would have to create divisions and divisions and divisions all over their pages, which got a little confusing. And so what the designers decided was they were going to create some tags uh, that helped people structure their pages in such a way that it was meaningful. So the three that I asked you to use so far were section, header, and figure. And as you'll see in the book, there are other ones as well, but these are the ones that we're primarily going to be needing uh, so far. Okay. Now, they are a little confusing because we they, for now, don't make any changes in your HTML or your page when you view it in the browser. Um, they're just here for organizational purposes, and eventually you'll be able to style them in your style sheet. <clears throat> Excuse me, I was just reading to my sons before bed and for like the last hour and my voice is a little bit gone. So, sections, section off portions of your page. And I'd like you to envision this like you would your resume. And your resume has different sections. You might have an education section or a work history section or a philanthropy section or a, I don't know, skills section, right? And each one of those sections has a heading that goes with it, the education heading or the skills heading, right? And then there's content within it. But as you are looking through your resume, you do notice those different sections are sort of broken off. And in your mind, you envision them as different sections. The education section discusses education. The job history discusses job history, and so on and so forth. So whenever we are going to have a new heading, okay, this is the heading, right, H1 through H6, we also need to have a new header that goes along with it. And you'll see going down the page, and this gets back to the section, I'll be right back to that, that I have, whoops, mistake. Put my header in the wrong place. Okay. Whenever we have a new heading, we need to put the header tag around it. Okay. Now, this gets confusing because we also now have head, header, 
and heading. Okay. The head, we remember, is only up above here. It contains info to that, that does not display on the web page. The heading is the actual content that will display on the screen. So educate, you know, here it is, Bill Wolf, my name, your H1 will be, be your name as well. The header tag wraps around, and we say wraps around because it opens and closes around the heading tags. And we do this whenever we have a header. I'm sorry, we have a heading, so it gets confusing. We do, we put the header tag around every instance of a heading. So you'll see it right here under H2. Okay, I'm going to scroll down to make sure that I have it around my H3s, which I do, and my H3 over here, which I do. Okay. Now, whenever you have a new header, I would like you to create a new section. Okay. So you'll see that I have this header, so I have a section that goes with it. And there's the opening and the closing. You will know when to create a new section when, uh, I'm sorry, you will know when to end your section when you find that it is time to start a new one because you have the header, All right? And you'll see now that I've ended this one right here because I have a new heading, which requires a header, which requires a section, okay? And that section will then go on and end. When I have a new section to begin, because I have a new heading, which requires a header, which requires a section, okay? So you need to remember this as you're coding. Headings require headers, which require sections, okay? And the sections end when you have a new header coming up below it, okay? Because the head section could go on for some time, okay? You see all this content here goes within this particular section. And I begin a new one because I have a new heading. Okay. So you should write this down in your notebook, however you're writing it down, that whenever you have a heading, a heading requires a header, which requires a section. Okay. Just like we have some little mantras for this class with the uh, code, upload, refresh, repeat, headings require headers, which require sections. Just repeat it over and over again. Eventually, we will be able to style these, these things. But for now, we just need to have this organizational structure here. And notice that I'm continuing with my clean coding. Um, and I'm hierarching and I'm spacing and everything is very intelligible and easy to read. While we're here, I do want to introduce you to one concept called commenting. And you'll notice that I put these little notes in here, right? And they do not actually display on my web page. You know, the web page just has the content. This is what my portfolio page looks like right now. These are comments. And to create a comment, you essentially just do an exclamation point, and then this is my comment. And when you're done, you do dash dash, and you close the bracket. These are extraordinarily helpful. And as we get further along, I'm going to require that you use some comments, both in your HTML and your CSS, to help you understand what it is that you're doing in your code. I've placed these here as definitions that you can look at while I'm discussing the, uh, the code. But you can also see that I've added a little note here for myself 
first portfolio section begins. So I know that from the code below here to below, that's going to be my first portfolio item. And then when it ends, I put end first portfolio item. So I know that this section is end, what this section is ending. Because if I'm looking at this right here, I can't see what's above, right? I can only see what's happening uh, at this moment. So this helps me understand what's coming above, and I don't have to do all that extra scrolling. And then my second portfolio item section begins uh, right over here. And then I go down and I end my second portfolio item, just the same way. OK, so that's header and section. Every time you have a heading, you require a header, which requires a section. Figure is much easier. Okay, figure must be used around all image tags. Okay, so every time you have an image, you need a figure to wrap around it. Again, we will be able to style this later on, uh, but it is right now uh, just necessary for the organization and it's part of HTML5. Um, and when we're doing our validation testing to make sure we're coding okay, uh, if we don't have these things, the little flags will, will, little flags will rise up and we won't be able to, uh, we have to fix it anyway. So it's good to put these in here now. And you can see the figure is down here for this other image. Again, these are not showing up on the page at all. They're just there as organizational structures that we will be able to use later on.